Thank you. Thank you, guys. My name is T.P. Mulrooney. Um, I am the golf comic. How many golfers do we have here tonight? Well, imagine my surprise. I wish I had picked a less expensive habit, like heroin. Because <laughs> I get to the golf course, some of these guys really do have a lot of money. I just bought five thousand shares of AT and T. Oh, really? I just bought five thousand shares of IBM. Oh, really? I just bought some uh, M and M's. <laughs> See, I know how to play golf because I get Golf Digest magazine for their tips. But they don't do me any good because all the tips come from really good players like Freddie Couples on how to sink those par four birdie putts. Well, I know how to sink the par four birdie putts. Rule number one, make sure it's your third shot. <laughs> I find you don't sink many birdie putts when you're on the green in seven. <laughs> A lot of my birdie putts are coming from 240 yards out. I don't think Freddie's using a three wood on his birdie putt. <laughs> Club selection may be my problem, I don't know. <laughs> and that's the, that's the gripe that the non-golfers have about us. They think we're crazy. And I think I know why. Because we talk to our ball. <laughs> Come on, run like a thief in the night. Run like you stole something. I played it with a guy like that. He kept rooting the ball on. Then he wanted his ball to stop in the green. He yelled, stop, you whore! <laughs> Unfortunately, just as the drink cart lady drove up. <laughs> you ever do this? You ever hit a bad shot? Throw your club. Your club goes further than the ball. <laughs> what a sinking feeling that is. You just go, mm oh, crap. <laughs> hey, I think I can chip in from there. Larry, grab my ball. I'm going to play my nine iron over here. See, it's all the cultures that play golf that are really crazy. And watch out, because now the Chinese are starting to play golf. When the Chinese get involved in something, they're going to do it really good, because the Chinese are probably the smartest people in the world. Chinese invented everything five, six hundred years before the rest of the world figured it out. They had guns, ammunition, printing press, papyrus, and drugs. They were the first culture to use drugs on a mass scale. So you can bet they were the first people to get paranoid from doing drugs. <laughs> Maybe we should build a wall. <laughs> he seems like the ultimate dad, because he raised the greatest golfer in the world. We didn't know much about my dad's talents, but we did know some of the things he could not do, which apparently included growing money on trees. <laughs> oh, you want another $20 bill? What, to play golf? Oh, sure, that's no problem. I just go out in the back and pick one off my money tree. <laughs> when I was 19 years old, it was the worst year of my life. Because when my dad was 19, he was a pilot in the Air Force. He usually reminded me that when I couldn't get the lawnmower started. <laughs> I've been down there doing everything I know. He says, I don't know, Dad. I can't seem to get this darn thing going. Right? What a nincompoop. <laughs> this is not a sophisticated piece of equipment. How it's just a lawnmower. Christ, right, you kids, I swear to God. When I was your age, I was flying bombers over Europe. This was Dad's way of telling me that he couldn't start the lawnmower either. <laughs> but to make him happy, I cut the grass with goggles and a white scarf. <laughs> Throwing shotguns and nylons to the neighbors. <laughs> and voices, my teacher told me. Think of the calming voices of your lifetime. Maybe your mother or your father. I thought, <laughs> no, not those. <laughs> For me, it was Jimmy Stewart. 
I get there on the tee, I'm thinking Jimmy Stewart, he's over my right shoulder. He's saying, okay, no, ju just pull the club back. Just, just pull the club back, oh, there you go. Nice and slow, nobody ever hit the ball with their back swing, did they? <laughs> no, they didn't. So just take it back nice and slow like that, there you go, and just let it go. Oh, that was a thing of beauty. <laughs> that was poetry. Harvey wasn't a beautiful swing. <laughs> Harvey said it's the most beautiful swing he's ever seen. Somehow getting over top of that ball, Jimmy Stewart goes away, Jack Nicholson appears over my shoulder. <laughs> just swing and swing hard, what are you, some kind of wussy? Swing at it, why do you think they call it a club? <laughs> you got to relax in the game of golf. You got to find some way to relax. See, it's, game, it's a game of grace. It is not a game, it's not a sissy game though. See, there's the thing. Some people may make that mistake. It's a game of grace, but it's not a sissy game. Although, if you get injured in golf, I recommend that you keep it to yourself. Because <laughs> I find that you don't get much sympathy for your golf injuries, especially for people who play football. Geez, that, that is a bad blister. <laughs> Here, let me give you the name of the doctor who gave me these plastic knees I'm hollering around. <laughs> Because golf is the last sport. Let's, put, let's, let's you know, own up to it. It is the last sport. Most of us have played other sports in our lifetime, but golf is pretty much it now. I think that's why golf courses look so much like graveyards. <laughs> Just to kind of get us used to the idea. <laughs> but still, I think golf is the rugged individual sport of all because you're so lonely out there. <laughs> all the other sports, I mean, it's particularly for the pros. Well, look at the pro golfer versus the other pro athletes on the team sports. They all get money. Like in baseball, I just read there are now 50 pitchers in the big leagues who make $3 million or more to throw baseball. I figured out how much that comes to per pitch. Now break it down. Baseball fans, what's a pitcher pitch? About 30 times a year? About 100 pitches a game. 3,000 pitches. Divide that into 3 million, comes to $1,000. A pitch. <laughs> Doesn't even have to be a strike. <laughs> It's like too much rent for me. And what a job this would be. This would be like, mm, January, February. <laughs> mm, March, April. All right, just a nutty night out. <laughs> but here's the person I think had the best financial year last year. It's gotta be Nicole Kidman, the actress. She won an Academy Award last year and she made a lot of films, made a lot of money, plus, she divorced Tom Cruise. Now get this, they were married for 10 years, she got a divorce settlement of $250 million. Now what do you figure they had sex? A thousand times? <laughs> hey, some of you guys are doing this math already. <laughs> I took the time to figure it out. That comes to par encounter, $250,000. Oh, tough. I hope it was good, buddy. He ought to talk to Donald Trump. He's been getting sex for like half that. See, women, the, thing that, the, the thing that I do know is that you are the most powerful force on the planet. You will eventually get everything you want. I can tell you this. You're the only force on the planet that can make a man dance. <laughs> Because trust me, we guys hate to dance, but we'll do it. Because we think this is our audition to have sex. And we guys do it, it's like a mating ritual. It should be part of the Discovery Channel. Here's a North American male dancing for his sex. He hates this activity, but we'll do it for hours if necessary. The female requires it or she'll fly away. <laughs> Women, here's how much in control you are. Now you do things just to confuse us. Like first of all, you'll tell us that you can't figure us out. Then you tell us that we only want one thing. <laughs> you figured us out. 
We're really not that complicated. Trees are more complicated than the average man. See, women, you have to understand this. You like honesty. We guys, we have an aesthetic appreciation for a well-placed lie. And we get a good one, we tell our friends about it. Does that really work? Oh, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> I went golf in four days last week. <laughs> that excuse alone, yeah. Yes, yes, I did. See, women, you like honesty. You want to know everything, especially like that first time we ever saw you. You want to know everything about that moment. You know, the first time you ever saw me. What attracted you to me? I mean, there was a lot of other pretty girls there that time. But what was so special and so sexy about you? <laughs> well, see, the truth could be on that particular night, he thought he could score with you. <laughs> but he can't say that. <laughs> I don't get him in a world of trouble. Honey, I'm glad you asked. And I was looking at another girl, and I thought, oh, what a babe. She'd never go to bed with me. <laughs> but you? <laughs> now, I love you guys. Thank you.